So, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'll quickly jump into uh, the topic because I think we're a bit over time. So, you now have an understanding of uh, basically how analytics fits into the digital transformation journey. And then I think the previous session, uh, which Suho did, gave you a very comprehensive overview of the different patterns that you can use in an uh, organization in order to implement uh, your analytics solution. So what I am going to talk about is basically how uh, an existing enterprise can incorporate an analytics solution and the interoperability uh, aspects of that. So before uh, we go deep into that, I would like to, to meet a few everyday characters. So uh, this is Agnes. So she's a senior operations manager at a sports facility uh, equipment manufacturing uh, factory. So essentially, uh, in her job, she needs to be proactive because she's responsible for whatever that happens on the factory floor. She needs to be aware of what is happening, uh, proactively uh, take necessary action if things are falling behind, and also basically be alerted on whatever situations that uh, she needs to know. So uh, essentially, she needs to be informed. Then, uh, so this is Patrick, who needs to be taken care of because of his uh, uh, various medical ailments, and uh, so essentially for him, uh, he needs to basically be able to communicate with his doctor uh, on with various medical diagnostics that he uh, would measure every day. Then he needs to get an update on when his next appointment would be, and also uh, based on those recent uh, interactions, uh, figure out, okay, this is my monthly prescription uh, for the next month. So, again, he needs to be connected in order to be taken care of. The final person whom I would like you to meet is David. He's someone like you who travels a lot to meet uh, various um, uh, business counterparts. So, he needs to be punctual. That means he needs to know uh, when he leaves uh, to travel, uh, whether his flight is going to be delayed, how much of waiting time that he needs to uh, spend, and whether there are any last minute uh, changes at the airport. So essentially, he needs to be updated. Okay, so now that you have met these three characters, very random uh, different characters, what's, uh, what's common amongst all of them? So they, all of them are exposed to relevant and contextual data in order to either do their job, in order to uh, carry on with their daily duties, their, their daily life. So how has this made, uh, been made possible? So they basically are connected to a system that is driven by analytics. So if you uh, take each one of them, uh, all the alerts, all the uh, notifications, all the data that they get are of a system which is insight driven. So what does this mean? So this means that basically, uh, so all of these three people are normal people and they are very similar to all of us who are in this room. So that means analytic is going to be part and parcel of your life, and analytics is also uh, is part and parcel of your business. So this is what we see by observation. Now, let's take a pause here and check whether this is uh, aligned with what the analysts have to say. So if you look at what the analysts say, so I uh, basically have a few uh, quotes because we don't have time for a lengthy number of uh, predictions. So Gartner basically says that in 2018, 50% of large organizations would basically compete using advanced analytics. 
And this is not just operational analytics, this is advanced analytics, which also includes inside-driven uh, services and so on. And this is going to cause disruption in entire industries. So that is, that is very much in line with the uh, real-life observations. Then in 2021, Forrester predicts that inside-driven businesses will earn $1.8 trillion. So that's massive. And uh, this means that, again, uh, inside-driven businesses are going to take over. So that means uh, analytics is definitely uh, going to be part and parcel of everybody's life. And then, in order to cater to this, so Forrester also says that the big data tech market will go three times more than the overall tech market. So essentially, how is this going to be relevant to you, everyone in this room? So your business basically provides such systems which uh, will be driven by analytics. So you basically come from different organizations or you help different organizations build such enterprise solutions which uh, create a connected experience through which Agnes, Patrick, and David would basically be the end users. So in order to do that, what are the prerequisites? So we have two prerequisites. So first of all, in order to do that, your business should have a state-of-the-art analytics component, obviously. Point number two, this analytics component should be easy to integrate, and it also needs to interoperate with whatever that you have. Just so that we say that, okay, so it's inside-driven businesses that is going to take over the world, uh, you, that doesn't mean that you're going to drop everything and then build uh, your overall enterprise solution around this. You need to be able to introduce this into your existing solutions. So, uh, that's basically what uh, this uh, discussion is going to be. So, I would quickly go through the key expectations from an analytics uh, platform solution and then how uh, basically you can meet those expectations with uh, WSO2 technology, and then give you a quick view of what we have done with a few customers, uh, focusing on the interoperability aspect. Okay, so first of all, let's identify uh, what the expectations are. So I've broken this down into three levels. So the business perspective, uh, so, in order to, so the main objective of uh, bringing in uh, an analytic solution would be to able uh, to, to give you the ability to make better decisions. So this would mainly focus on the operational and business monitoring aspects. Then, uh, so what does this mean? This means that uh, all your bis uh, all the users in that organization needs to know what is happening and they need to be able to act upon it. So that means whatever analytics results that we have needs to be effectively communicated. It needs to either be visualized in a very uh, effective and a um, very informative manner, and then uh, there also needs to be various alerting mechanisms to, uh, that would get triggered off and notify uh, the people who should know when a situation arises. And then, uh, leading to the uh, faster prediction, so businesses would also require to be able you, to using this new analytics solution or integrating it into their overall solution to be able to offer new value propositions. So this would be products and services that are driven off the insights that they're going to get. So that's the topmost level. Next comes uh, the, the people who are going to create this solution. So now, okay, they have been given a task, bring in an analytics solution, uh, and then let's, this is, these are the things that it needs to do. So then this task comes to the solution architects, the enterprise architects in that organization. So how are we going to do this? Are we going to basically uh, disrupt everything that is there? Are we going to be able to phase it off, uh, phase it in, uh, uh, in an incremental manner? So there are two approaches. Of course, there can be hybrids of this as well. So the non-intrusive integration is where 
you basically don't want to mess with uh, what is there now. So you expect the analytics solution to basically be able to pull data from the various systems, the heterogeneous systems that are already in action and get the necessary data in order to analyze uh, the various KPIs, for example, that are needed to be uh, known. And then once the analysis is done, again you're expected, the analytics solution is expected to push the results uh, back into existing flows with no interruptions. So it can be uh, showing it on a new dashboard or a new tab in an existing dashboard. It can be perhaps uh, sending in some alerts and notifications using an existing alert and notification system. Uh, and uh, of course, basically storing some additional data in a database and so on. Then the intrusive integration. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't basically mean so bad as uh, it looks. It's essentially where an organization feels that their enterprise solution is flexible enough to incorporate a few changes in order to uh, uh, integrate with this new analytics solution. So essentially, then uh, this analytics solution needs to be able to receive input from multiple flow systems and sources of data. So the main difference is uh, the, it's not only going to be a full model, and again, once uh, analysis is done, the results would be basically be able to push into existing flows and systems. So once that is sorted, then the product perspective comes. So now this is looking at, okay, what's the best possible product that we can use for this? So based on all those expectations, so essentially there are three uh, main areas of which interoperability is important. So an analytics solution basically would receive data. So the product that you use in order to create this solution should be able to support multiple prot protocols and formats, and then we also be able to do some pre-processing uh, before analyzing if required. Uh, so then uh, the next part is like receiving, this also needs to communicate with other systems uh, and other flows. So basically, again, it needs to support uh, multiple protocols and formats. And finally, in while doing the analysis, it should be able to integrate with existing data and models, because this is not going to be a standalone system. And if, if you feel that a specific uh, need is need, uh, new processing need is needed, it should be also be able to incorporate that as well. So these are the three main uh, levels of expectations. And now, let's see how these expectations can be met. So uh, before we go there, so I think Suho also mentioned about this. And uh, uh, so if you are creating an analytics solution, so these are the main uh, three uh, steps that you would uh, consider when doing this. So you need to basically uh, collect the data in order to do that. You need to be able to define, okay, how is this data going to be received? And uh, then you also need to basically figure out uh, the same when you communicate the results. How, is, how are the results going to be uh, sent out? Uh, and then finally, how is the analysis going to be done. So uh, you need to think of this solution, each and every sub-problem that this solution needs to solve in this uh, manner. So then you would basically be able to identify, okay, these are the uh, integration points. So in order to be interoperable, each step in this uh, process needs to be uh, easily integrated. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, this, uh, uh, the expectations from the product perspective. So first of all, in collecting data. So supporting multiple uh, transports and formats. So uh, <clears throat> the analytics product that we have basically can receive events over multiple uh, uh, ways. So it supports, so it supports uh, the standard protocols if you want to send HTTP 
event or H uh, event over HTTP that is available. Then if you want to uh, connect it to a messaging layer like uh, JMS or Kafka, uh, that is possible. If your system uh, basically has certain parts, business flows, which would write details into files, then uh, the product is able to basically link to those files and get the necessary data. Uh, and uh, of course, so if your system, so your system might be something which is uh, also in, uh, integrating with external SaaS uh, products as well. And you would want to basically uh, get some input into the analytics solution uh, like this as well. And uh, so then you might decide to uh, basically send it through your integration layer, which might already be there and then uh, send the events to the analytics product. So these are the different uh, protocols, uh, transports that are uh, supported. And of course, if you do have a system which has a legacy uh, uh, protocol that needs to be supported, then we also have the ability to uh, extend uh, the capabilities to receive uh, events over that. And uh, the formats, basically, we again have the ability to uh, receive events in these different formats. Uh, so basically, the first uh, requirement of being able to support multiple transports and formats in receiving data can be easily satisfied. Next. Now, this comes in uh, the situation of uh, basically integrating with what is already there. So what you basically get from other systems might not be the same event that you would be using in order to do the final analysis. So then that means you need to be able to do a little bit of transformation. So if it is something like changing uh, the way the event has been formatted, the names of the fields, and basically reducing some nested uh, nest that is already there uh, and doing some very simple transformations, then the analytics product is capable of receiving the external event as it is, mapping it into what is required inside the product, and then basically continuing with the processing. So then, uh, basically, uh, that uh, expectation is also satisfied. Uh, so. In some cases, especially in the non-intrusive integration uh, uh, situation, you would basically have disparate systems, and you basically need to do a lot of um, transformations, uh, external correlations, before you can basically create the events that uh, will be analyzed. So in this case, the pattern that we see, which is most effective, is to introduce the integration uh, layer of WSO2, do the transformations there, and then basically uh, publish the necessary events uh, to the analytics uh, product. So then uh, basically uh, uh, the analytics product doesn't need to do any other transformations, can simply receive these events and continue to uh, do the uh, analysis. Okay, so that's about uh, receiving data. Then. Uh, the analyzing part. So um, when you are uh, doing analysis uh, of uh, the various events that come into uh, your solution, and you essentially would need to link up to existing uh, data stores because there would be metadata that you need to refer to. There would be basically definitions that you need to refer to uh, while doing uh, the uh, stream processing. And there would also be the need to link to historical data, if so required. So the product basically supports uh, uh, hooking up uh, metadata stores as event tables or just uh, data stores as event tables. And then you also have the ability to join these tables with incoming streams uh, while doing uh, the processing. And if needed, you basically can update these stores uh, as a sub-result. So this capability is available with uh, WSO2's analytics product. And then, uh, so your organization might also be interested in doing a few predictions, and you might already have some models that you have pre-built. 
you might already have some uh, scripts in batch processing that you already have built. So the product, again, supports uh, the ability to basically incorporate the work that you already have done and basically use that while uh, doing the new processing. So these are the integration uh, capabilities. Uh, that uh, the product provides. And then finally, if you feel that uh, there is some uh, case, so this is uh, uh, where you need to like refine some processing, you also have the extensibility capabilities in the product as well. Okay. So let's then uh, go to the uh, third step of how you communicate uh, the results. So like the receiving part, Again, uh, when you, after you have done your processing, you basically will need to uh, be able to uh, push the results to multiple uh, sources, uh, sinks. So it might be just that you write the results into a uh, data store. It might be just uh, that you, uh, the existing system is on a messaging layer. And once you do the analysis, the result will be pushed into uh, a message bus, and then the subscribed systems would consume it and then use it in their other operations. Uh, it might be that uh, you would need to basically send out uh, notifications. So notifications can be directly sent out by uh, the product itself, or else, if you already have a notification system in-house, the product is able to send out, uh, a, if, it, if it doesn't have an API, it can basically trigger that API uh, so that then the third-party notification system can do the sending out of the uh, alert. And then, of course, uh, sending uh, the results to other uh, parts of your solution as well. So uh, then, now communicating also would require the ability to uh, incorporate in the visualization aspects as well. So the product has uh, uh, dashboarding capabilities and it also comes with some uh, gadgets that we have uh, deployed, the default gadgets. But in some cases, um, so you might basically require some specific visualization needs. And in that case, the product has the capability to, for you to create a custom gadget that would then be added to the existing dashboard and be shown. Uh, then, now, you might also opt to use an existing uh, visualization uh, engine that you already have, an existing reporting tool that you already have. So with the WSO2 Analytics product, it's very simple to integrate in such cases. So the third-party tool tools would either basically be running off a data store, or else it might also be running off uh, API calls or events that comes to it. So the uh, the analytics product is capable of basically either uh, pushing the data, like I mentioned earlier, into a data store, which the third-party visualization tool would then pick up and then visualize. And uh, same thing would also be used in integrating with third-party reporting tools. Okay. So these are the main areas of uh, inter uh, integration in order to be interoperable with an existing uh, enterprise solution as we see it. And uh, I think I have a little few more minutes left. So I'll just quickly run through a few examples uh, that uh, we have uh, basically been involved with and f just mention you okay, what were the integration aspects that we had to basically focus on. So uh, this basically is uh, the healthcare. Uh, use case which Suho mentioned. So basically, uh, it's a central uh, uh, notification center of various inputs from different patients. Uh, and uh, essentially, so the main um, messaging layer at this organization was uh, Kafka. So we basically had to integrate with uh, this messaging layer using our Kafka receivers. And uh, then 
we also needed, so they also had a specific deployment pattern which they wanted us to uh, uh, follow. And this was to do a multi data center, high available deployment uh, based on the uh, criticality of this system. So we were able to basically handle that request as well through our uh, uh, receiving uh, framework. And like Tsuho mentioned, today it's part of the product now. So the next uh, use case is basically a recommendation engine sort of a system for food orders, bulk food orders, where the, the people who uh, do the food orders are restaurants. So the system requires you to basically, um, uh, when you place an order, if you're a restaurant, uh, based on the last uh, number of orders that you had placed, if there was some major difference in what you ordered yesterday, for example, then uh, basically the system would ask, are you really sure that you don't want this item? So in order to uh, do this solution, we again had to basically uh, integrate with some existing stuff that was already there. So uh, the, the incoming events were HTTP, so we, were, we had to uh, basically use our HTTP receiving capabilities, and uh, then uh, basically we had to <coughs> link to historical data of what had already been ordered in the past a number of months, and then use that information in order to build the recommendation. So we had to inter integrate with existing data stores. And of course, uh, once the analysis was done, uh, the results had to be pushed back into their messaging layer, which was uh, JMS in this case. Uh, so uh, then, so this is typically uh, David's use case. But basically, uh, we had to create a solution which was providing uh, information for uh, uh, users of a certain airline. And essentially, again, the interoperability aspects here were <coughs> in receiving data, again, through Kafka, and interoperability through existing data stores because there were beacons placed around the airport and the app had to connect to this, and finally the, uh, <clears throat> the processing needed to know uh, where the exact location was. So this came through some metadata referencing. So these basically were the integration points that had to be used in order to create this solution. Uh, so the next use case is basically where the entire CD engine was basically uh, put into uh, existing ecosystem. Uh, so it had to basically adhere to the, uh, the messaging layer that was there, again, Kafka. And it also had to be basically embedded as a uh, library, and then that was basically scaled out. So the interoperability aspect here was the ability to use the CD engine as a library and then incorporate it in uh, basically uh, some fraud detection scenarios. And uh, the final uh, example that I have to uh, share today is uh, the scenario of Agnes. So this is about uh, into, uh, providing some operational analytics of existing uh, systems in a non-intrusive manner. So essentially we needed to basically be able to um, uh, be able to uh, receive events and also pull events of different formats, do some pre-processing there, and then uh, the visualization interoperabilities were also used because it was about being able to see uh, the flows in an organization, whether there were any uh, areas which were taking too much of time, so whether there were any SLA violations. So all of this required some custom gadgets so that uh, the business users could basically see this and then figure out whether uh, uh, there was a problem or not. So uh, what I'd like to uh, conclude this talk with is, so uh, analytics is definitely going to be the 
main uh, 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 disrupting technology in order to uh, go forward. And you, you basically, it, it's going to be part and parcel of everything. So that means you need to be able to easily uh, incorporate this into your existing ecosystem. And how to do it is basically figure out, okay, uh, what, what you want, and then uh, based on creating the solutions, what are the different places that you need to integrate, and then figure out uh, the best possible uh, technology to use. And as we see, so WSO2 technology basically uh, would basically help you to do that uh, in the future. Okay, so uh, that is the end of my talk, and uh, so I think we are a bit over time. Uh, if you have questions, I can take them offline so that we can uh, conclude this track. Okay, thank you very much.